And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. I have no idea. All right. Oh. Greetings everyone. Welcome. Uh, as you saw the um the intro to the show, you already know who we are and everything about us pretty much almost everything about us um, but at least as it pertains to the show so why should I be redundant and tell you who we are well, just you know uh, hit the pause button whatever go back to start and watch the intro again if you, if you were uh, you were uh, distracted during the intro and then you'll know who we are um, I just want to say everything we talk about politically on this show is part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch shell. Soaking that conch energy from the briny deep. Now, um, I want to start off with some Chisler's Hall of Shame. All right. Let me get my blackthorn shillelagh here. Ooh. Shame, shame, shame. In honor of uh, uh, Mr. Sean uh, Morrison, formerly known as Sean Hollywood. Shame, shame, shame. On a company called Micro Center and Walmart's electronics department. Now, why do I say that? I'll tell you why. It's a personal issue that involves uh, myself, James P. Madonna, and my radio partner, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And I'm sure we're not the only victims here. Uh, we, uh, at one point in time, we were shopping for a desktop personal computer. Now, when you look at the current catalog online okay it's 2016 uh, it's uh, May 2016 you look at the catalog you're assuming that everything on the catalog is brand new because it, why would they have it in the catalog number one and if it wasn't new it would say used you know like it does on eBay you know, it tells you if it's used or new. It's not used. Huh? It's not used. Why would they say it's used if it's not used? It's brand new. Right. It's just outdated. No, no, no. You, they, they don't specify whether... Well, they don't, it, yeah, well, they don't have to, but uh, I'm saying it's not used. No, it's not used. It's outdated. It's outdated. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is the PC was advertise as to what it was it was sitting they have these items sitting in the warehouse possibly collecting dust and the PC that Dr. Bill purchased and the one and most likely the one I purchased from Walmart had uh, outdated components like in my case <clears throat> the CPU 
was only uh, for a notebook. It was, and it was uh, they, the manager of the electronics department told me it's you have an outdated CPU. But when you go online to shop for a computer, most people are dazzled by the price. They look at the low price and they go, "Oh, this is interesting." And then they read the model. They read what it is. Now, it doesn't say uh, the. It, they don't tell you the year it came out. They just tell you what it is. And that is deceiving because in a lot of cases you don't know just how old the model you're buying, the new model in the box that you're buying, actually is. And you think you're getting a great bargain for your money. And then you take it home and you find out that it's slow as can be. Mine is super slow. Really pathetic. Uh, Reverend Bill's uh, PC um is um was uh, like five or seven years old sitting in the micro center warehouse was it five or seven walmart oh wait no it was micro center no you got yours from micro center was it yeah, a dell because ronnie had to get it it's a dell right no gateway gateway i'm sorry all right he got a gateway from micro center that was several years outdated but sitting in their warehouse. But at least tell people when, what year the computer came out so they have an idea that they're, they're, even though they're paying a very low price, supposed low price, they know what year model it is. You know what I mean? Like, that's like having a car. That's like having a, um, in, uh, sitting in a showroom, never touching the asphalt of a street, having a car that's five years old but never driven. Well, you go into the showroom <clears throat> and you <laughs> see the year of the model and you decide whether or not you want to buy it. That's all. Same thing goes for retail. Now, apparently, there are many scams in American retail industry. To me, it's uh, legalized racketeering when you do not disclose um, all of the necessary information about the product. Like if, if, if it doesn't say outdated, you assume it's this year's model because the average person doesn't know. Not everybody's a computer geek or a computer wizard that can go right down the line. Now the manager at Walmart tells me, like, it's my job to do my research. Well, it's also the retail company's job to post what the item really is in the advertisement. Not to have something sitting in your warehouse for several years and then you can't sell it and then you, you sell it and it looks like it's this year's model because you're looking at the models that they have now. So anyway, that's it. What else is new in American free market capitalism and retail? It's all a scam, and uh, that's it. Shame on microcenter.com and Walmart's electronics. Uh, mine is an Acer, uh, but the uh, CPU is made by Intel. But then again, if it's for if it's a CPU for a notebook, it should say notebook, and not say desktop or not say a PC. All right. So, in a way, I was deceived, and Dr. Bill was even more deceived, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, because his was like five or seven years old, something like that, sitting in the warehouse. All right, now, um, like you were telling me offline, uh, mm -hmm. not offline, off the air, that uh, progressives make up the bulk of uh, voting in the United States. Independence. But, I'm sorry, independence. Thank you. Independents make up the bulk of the voting in the United States. Independents. People that are not registered uh, to any of the two major parties. Now, uh, Deborah Wash Wasserman Schitz of the DNC said, if it was up to her, 
um, independents will never be able to vote in the primaries. In the Democratic primaries. In the Democratic pri primaries. Well, naturally, if the independents were allowed to vote in the primaries, Hillary would not win mm -hmm. uh, uh, most of the primaries, or may maybe, who knows? She would be losing uh, by a landslide if independents were allowed to vote in the primaries. That's what she said. Now, there is a, uh, in my opinion, I believe that Bernie Sanders, <coughs> Senator Bernie Sanders, is the most Christian candidate since FDR, even though he's Jewish, he behaves the most Christian candidate, period, of any party. You mean um, more Christian than Santorum? <laughs> wow. Oh, right wing Christianity? Well, that's that was my next subject. There seems to be a tie in here. Uh, false Christianity, right wing, free, free market capitalism with the two party system. There's a tie in with this false Christianity, this counterfeit Christianity, with the <laughs> with corporatism, with capitalism involved, of course, with the two-party system. Uh, Democrats, of course, are not uh, progressive anymore. They are corporatists. They're not even moderate. They're, uh, the heck with the word blue dog, they're just flat-out corporatists, all right? Which means they work for the top 20 or 1%. Not you, but they they, they behave progressive to get your vote. Now, yes, they are counterfeit Christians, the right-wing uh, um, people that are gung-ho for our uh, free market capitalist system, which is rigged for the rich only, always has been. And uh, they do not know the Bible at all. And um, they claim to be Christian, but they act anti-Christian, you know, a uh, person should be judged by, by their actions, not what they say, the fruits they bear, and they do not behave in a Christian manner, because if they behaved in a Christian manner, they would not be pro-capitalism, they would not be pro-conservatism. There's a video out right now, they're playing on, on television of a young man <clears throat> who's shopping yeah and he's on some form of government program right involving his wife and child okay. it's not food stamps per se something else but it's something else okay. which regards food hmm. might be wick i don't know because i don't know how the program works but he was in line getting his order and bagging it and etc. Right. And this woman in line starts bitching at him. Because that, that money for his food stamps or whatever he's got there is coming out of her paycheck. Just hers. Yeah. And he said to her, hey lady, I'm, I'm working 50, 60 hours. I ain't got enough from my job, you know, to buy the food, etc. Well, he was nice. He, he, yes, was, he ni was nice at first. He was yes. nice enough to give her an explanation, but in reality, he owed her no explanation. No, obviously not. But uh, yeah, and then and she bitched at him and fucked him and you know, uh, cursed him and etc. Hey, lady, I got news for you. What's coming out of your paycheck is a bloated military budget. Subsidies and tax cuts for the rich. Absolutely, yes. Interest payment on the national debt. And lo and behold, maybe a little bit for social program. So if you want to start bitching at somebody and etc., start with those three items first. Then I know you're honest and you really want to change things. But if you're just going to bitch at that poor slob that's working 50, 60 hours a week and can't feed his fucking family, 
and get off his back. Maybe she's only getting her information from Fox News or mainstream media. Well, Evidently, she's uh, she's she, out of touch. She, she's That's out of she touch, is. and she doesn't know the facts. Yeah, and 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 she uh, uh, the part that she's right about is that <clears throat> unfortunately, because of Ronald Reagan, the middle class does have the tax burden. Yeah, they had to pick it up. On the middle class, it's a burden. Because we gave the, the, the holidays to the rich. The rich have been on a tax holiday for 30 years because of the demon puppet Reagan, the dope Hollywood actor Reagan. Uh, you know, he just gave it, he changed the tax system. And uh, the middle class are bearing the, uh, the weight of taxation on their shoulders. So that part is correct. But as far as percentages go, she's supporting military waste and the uh, military industrial complex. <clears throat> you know, and, and really it's like 2%. Social services make up like 1% to 2% of the total budget. Really. Yeah, but, but you know, there are... there she are. probably goes to church on Sunday too. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, teabaggers will insist. Oh, they will say that the churches should handle this. The, the charities. It's well, like, we it, tried it, that in the 1930s with the Great Depression. Guess what? It didn't work. This, um, well, if <clears throat> if we if we had a, a fair tax system, which is a progressive tax system. Yes, the more money you make, the more taxes you pay, and the middle class would not be paying uh, the bulk of taxation. It would Thank be you. the rich, which it should be. But you know, if you talk to a teabagger, they 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 seem to uh, echo what they hear from Republicans. They'll tell you, "Oh no, 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 the rich are paying yeah. the bulk of." Uh, uh, hey, don't feel sorry. For multi-millionaires and multi-billionaires, <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, Don't, they've taught them well, haven't they? They brain, because they are. They brainwashed them well, and uh, you know, getting all dressed up in your uh, your suit and tie and going to church every Sunday means nothing. You know, walking into a building, I mean, uh, hey, these people, if they, if, if they, if they, they, they wouldn't know Jesus and and God if they tripped over them. Yeah, and, and you know deep down that your local churches and relatives do not have the money to support the poor. So when they tell you to go to your local church mm -hmm. instead of have a, having social services or welfare system, and they tell you to go to your relatives and go to your local church, that's just a way of getting rid of you, you know, sweeping yeah. you under the carpet. Because there's no way that those two... Uh, entities can afford to help the poor at all. It, it's hogwash. Now the uh, Bible under God's <laughs> economics has it that if you, you own your land, you, 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 you harvest your land, and you leave, you leave around the four sides of your land. So the poor and the motherless, uh, the, 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 the orf, uh, you know, the, the homeless? Well, not the homeless, the, 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 the the mothers who have the child children yeah. and etc. And they go in there and they can pick out all the food they want. They just can't take too much to take home with them. They just take enough. Okay? And that's every field. Surplus every field. Surplus crops. Yeah. You're supposed to leave it there for them. So that they can do that. That's well, the God's welfare under, system. Under, under God's economics, there's no uh, charging people interest. No usury for uh, money like the all like the the ripoff fees coming out of Bank of America and all these big banks with their overdraft fees and all this crap. All yeah. debts are forgiven after seven years. If you sell your land, you get it back after fifty years. Under God's economics. Yeah. Oh, so, I'm sure that would be called socialism. You know, uh, on our Progressive Discussions um, Facebook page, this uh, somebody, um, a lot of people share this particular uh, George Carlin banner. Uh, if you, those of you that know George Carlin, uh, know that he was way ahead of his time and he was very progressive. 
and he told it like it is in George Carlin's way uh, anyway this dude says uh, everything George Carlin says is always refers to the society as being part of the herd there is no individualism so I went off on him and I told him exactly what your fancy word of individualism means it means if you're poor don't expect any help from anybody die <coughs> you know yeah well the individualism mm. is the big thing they, they they protect in capitalism as we know it yeah um, now, individualism. now what is this deal you with what you want individualism means uh, the haves high and rand. the haves have theirs and yeah. if you're a have-not, well, that's your problem. Screw you're a moocher. You. You're a moocher, right. You're a moocher, yes. Except the, ri the rich kids born with a silver spoon. Altruism is a weakness. They're not moochers. Yeah, they're all Ayn Rand yes. and Milton Friedman uh, disciples. Yes. Uh, 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 selfishness is a virtue. Yes. To Ayn Rand. Greed is good. Now what is this? Uh, what is this deal with uh, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker wanting to give uh, drug tests to people collecting unemployment? Mm -hmm. Don't people pay into unemployment yes. like they pay into Social Security? They also pay taxes on it. Ain't that something? Wait a minute. You're out of work. You're collecting two thirds, maybe, of the 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 the, 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 the salary you were making. That and they make you pay taxes on it. That they they make you pay taxes twice yeah. on the same income that you paid into. Yeah. And now Scott Walker wants to throw another roadblock yeah. in, in front of money that that you're entitled to. It's not an entitlement. Unemployment insurance and uh, and social security. They're it's not entitlements, but he wants to throw an additional roadblock in front of you by having mandatory drug tests yeah yeah mandatory drug tests That's for republicans for you everybody who needs financial help in the united states a conservative wants you to take a drug test so uh maybe if you fail it you don't get any they money throw you off the rolls they and, save a couple of bucks and then you end up in the gutter somewhere okay smaller government Smaller I government. Want Norquist. I want right. to make the now, government so small I can drown it in okay. the bathtub. So what what plans do I know what plans they have for all this extra all these extra poor homeless people. They want to arrest them for vagrants and throw them into a privatized prison so they can work for free as a slave. Some states have already got debtors prisons back. Debtors prisons? Yes. Yeah. So, in other words, no personal bankruptcy anymore? Well, the, the personal bankruptcy that we, we knew uh, a, couple of, a decade or so ago does not exist today. Oh, by the way, you know uh, credit cards, uh, uh, banks, uh, whatever, credit card companies? Uh, I know someone personally that um, got screwed over, uh -huh. had a 3.9% uh, interest because it, he earned it and he was getting pre-approved offers left and right and yeah. uh, the post office delivered one payment <coughs> like a day late they jacked up Chase Bank jacked his interest rate from 3.9 percent way above 20 yeah, percent yeah, yeah. penalized him didn't even care if he was making payments on time for years yeah. forget about the man's uh, track record with yeah. Chase they didn't care they Sunk uh, their the balls they when sunk, they get you. They have no, um, that I mean, uh, uh, it's business, no sense of fairness. It's the bottom line, that's all it is. Yeah, so anyway, they, they jacked it up. There was an excuse for them to jack it way up. That's correct. Anyway, the guy had to, he first started out with bill collectors harassing him, then he, he sent a cease and desist letter legally uh, uh, filled out and the uh, um, de the debt collectors stop calling them mm. because by law they have to abide by cease and desist letter so they stopped now um, what happened was uh, at the end 
he received the letter from Chase saying we are no longer pursuing this money uh, um, and that's that. We're, that's it. You owe us nothing now. They wrote what he owed off on their income taxes for Chase mm -hmm. just like the cost of labor is tax deductible for all businesses in the United States corporations the cost of labor is tax deductible uh, people that can't pay their credit cards that's tax deductible but what do they do? CEO pay is tax deductible. The stock options is tax deductible. Pensions are tax deductible. Health care is tax deductible. It's all tax but deductible. The CEOs of the corporations and the right wing bitch and moan <coughs> when they don't get their money and they have to write it off. They don't mention writing it off, but they bitch and moan that they are deprived a little profit here and there. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what? If you're rich, I have no compassion for you. Don't <coughs> cry. Don't ever cry to me if you're rich. Because I don't give a fuck. You know, and, and I think most of America has gotten to that point where they don't give a fuck. I mean, listen. Well, they, won't vote. they don't vote that way. Well, they, uh, the, the, uh, there are idiots out there, uh, naturally. Uh, uh, call them the minorities that uh, sadly and mistakenly and foolishly support Hillary Clinton, call them the politically correct morons that must have that female in the White House, whatever. <clears throat> or call them the mainstream media that doesn't have the backbone to tell their sponsors that they are going to uh, 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 do their job like, like the old-fashioned journalists of the past and be unbiased. <clears throat> no, no, no. They support Hillary, too. Now, one word about... Oh, now they mention Bernie because they have to, but they don't say a lot about him. No. It's it's always Trump, Hillary, Trump, Hillary, Trump, Hillary. Okay? Um, Hillary and Trump. Hillary and Trump. Hillary and Trump. They, they, they say just enough, just about what they have to say about Bernie Sanders. <clears throat> the system's rigged. Uh, there's voter fraud. Uh, hey, did they overturn? Did did Bernie end up getting Nevada? Uh, because they said uh, Bernie, they it turned out that Bernie Sanders did get more votes in I Nevada. He did. And yeah, something like that. But but anyway, uh, in Oregon, he's over seventy percent Bernie Sanders. So well, it looks yeah. good in Oregon. Uh, well, then good, because West Virginia and Kentucky should go to him. California. Because of that coal comment by Hillary. Yeah. Uh, California, so far, Bernie looks strong in California. Too early to tell. Well, he needs it, because he's got to yeah. do away with but, those super delegates. But, but, but being that Bernie won Idaho, Washington, and there's a hell of a good chance he's going to win Oregon, and if he wins California, you might as well call the entire West Coast Sanders country. You might as well. And I'm not sure if he really ended up winning Nevada. I mean, he probably, in reality, if you want to count the votes of independents, he most likely won practically every state in the country. I believe he, I believe, uh, I don't know what they did with it, but I believe he won Iowa caucus, too. When they recounted or something. Iowa? Yeah. Really? I think so. But they see there the, was some problem there. The media, it. the media gave it to Clinton right away. They just couldn't wait to give it to Clinton. He wins a state or this, that, and the other thing, and they give half the delegates to her. Because they're fucking. It's obvious what's going on. It happened to Trump down in uh, Louisiana too. Well, Trump. Where they gave the, the, the most of the delegates to Cruz. Well, Trump doesn't have to worry about Ted Cruz anymore. Jeez. Actually, there's nobody left. Nobody left. Trump has the nomination. So so Trump can technically pick his vice presidential running mate. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, but Trump is like, Trump is Trump. He, uh, you know, he says whatever he feels like saying, but, he, but he's, everything's out in the open with Trump. He's not a sneaky snake in the grass like yes, Hillary but Clinton. He speaks. He speaks. He he 
He draws the gun before he's ready to shoot. He goes off he half... He lacks evidence. He goes off half-cocked all the right. time. That's right, half-cocked. Well, Hillary Clinton is just a flat-out liar. Yeah. And, uh... She just says what she has to say in the venue that she's in. She is, <laughs> like her husband, she is a master panderer. Uh, she she says what she has to say to appeal that's to as many voters as she can to attain her goal. Hey. And then she says, and then later on when they catch her, it's like, uh, you took me out of contacts. Or, uh, or in the case of Bosnia, she said, oh, so what? Yeah, also, oh. uh, we had a duck, the sniper fire out on the airfield. You know, a younger Hillary Clinton in Arkansas, he, she volunteered to defend this uh, rapist. Ugh. And she, like, in court, she said it was the young girl's fault. The young, ah. girl, the young girl asked for it. She, she, she seduced him or some crap. She's really uh, not a very... She's really not a nice, ethical human being in real life. Well, what lawyer is? You know the old joke, don't you? <laughs> What's that? What is a thousand lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? What? A start. <laughs> yeah. Well, well liked. But that, well, isn't it funny how most politicians, probably in the ninety percentile, lawyers. are lawyers? Yeah. What did Curtis Lee used to call them? Uh, liars for hire. Yes. The uh, guardian angels founder who for some reason when he was on the radio he was a teabagger because he was yeah, he uh, was right winger he was right wing but he was he had a progressive objective in his organization it was kind of weird i mean mm -hmm. servant of the servant of the public yeah and and not a wealthy man not not part of the top 20% but he was conservative. Yep. Just like a like like a teabagger. They don't have a pot to piss in, but they're conservative. Yep. Can't figure it out. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. We probably have no time to to Oh, we got a little a time. Plenty time. Well, I wouldn't say plenty, but we're 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 doing all right. We're doing all right. I thought it, it, it seemed like we were Well, we had important things to uh to go over, you know, and um, I don't uh, give kudos to anybody anymore on the show because, you know, uh, uh, to me, just giving me a thumbs up or clicking like and not being a proactive, progressive warrior and uh, not subscribing to the newsletter. To me, it's like, why? Why am I giving kudos to like a dozen people if most of them don't even click like when I give kudos to them? So, I stopped. Go ahead. Can it be that this country deserves Donald Trump? Uh, as a national embarrassment? I, 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 you know what? I hate to say it, but he, they kind of do deserve Donald Trump. They're that fucked up. After all, he is a direct result of reality television, portraying stereotypical, obnoxious, ugly Americanism. Well, uh, Americans, uh, uh, they don't want to be bothered with politics. They just want to party. 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 Here is a man not qualified on any level for the presidency, yet with the help of the media, and a vapid culture of accountability, he has been given credibility incredible. Blaming both parties for Trump's rise is only part of the picture. We hear about the angry, white, forgotten male. The people never engaged in the political process. Well, where have they been? It is our civic responsibility to be informed and to vote on all levels, local, national, and everything in between. How is it that we wait 
to be moved and inspired before we get up and take a stand about something. Anything. I understand the country has changed and many now identify as independents. People are fed up with politics as usual. Anger, apathy are not forces for change. If you adhere to a rugged individualism, <laughs> pull together and yeah. run as an independent candidate and challenge the status quo. I saw a quote on a t-shirt quite a while ago. It rings true today. It said, we deserve the government we allow. Yeah, I think one of the old presidents said that, Grover Cleveland, or somebody said that. Americans will receive the kind of government that they deserve. Correct. And if Americans uh, just want to stay in and their own... And it's bought and paid for. Yeah, well, if Americans just want to stay in their own private little uh, hedonistic uh, world and their little clique um, and not care about what's going on with the country and um, and w what's really happening, not what mainstream media tells you. Well then, you know, maybe Donald Trump is for you. Turn the United States into one gigantic reality show headed for uh, the abyss, for doom. Saw a picture of uh, lemmings rushing to the cliff. And one lemming, it's, he got out of the group and he walks down the mountain or whatever and it says, the lemming who listened to his mother. Well, it's also a, 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 um, an in, a free, independent, critical thinking lemming. Yeah, it was well, not that's what, that was the indication. Yeah, I mean... Uh, he didn't go along with the group, the herd, yeah. over the cliff. Well, unfortunately, I don't know if it's some evil spell in the end times or they're just, these people are not born with enough brain cells, but um, thank God uh, there are massive amounts of Americans that feel the burn today. And, uh, and, and if all these people write in Bernie Sanders, I know I'm bringing my. I'm going to sneak my camera into the voting booth. I'm going to. I'm going to video my. Uh, I'm going to narrate it too. But they don't have to write them in. You, you're, you're confusing the convention with the voting. Well, if the he's a Democrat. He's on the ballot. You vote for him. Period. So, but if he loses, no. What, then he goes to the convention, and he does what he can with his delegates and. And getting his policies on the platform, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But the voting and the convention are two different things. So the convention is just for the Democratic Party. Yeah. To, to, talk their talk the talk and 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 pick who they like. Well, there won't be any picking because it will be the person with the most delegates. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna vote. You know. It, the, it'll be the a, voting will be over. There'll be a cold day in hell before I vote for Hillary Clinton. That will be in the general election. Now we're talking about three different things. Uh, all right. I'm not talking about the primaries and the convention. I'm talking because the convention is still part of the two-party two system. I'm talking about the general election. There, I will not ever, ever support that witch. Mm. I will. I can care less about what the media uh, says to Bernie Sanders about about bringing the Democratic Party together and contributing some of his funds to the yeah. Democratic Party. But fuck you and your Democratic Party. And right in Bernie at that time. They are. They want to protect the Democratic Party because uh, they are pussies. They don't. Um, utilize uh, unbiased, fair journalism. MSNBC, shame on you, you ugly carp carpet, you ugly carpet-munching feminists, 
Rachel Maddow, you pussy, Chris Matthews, is that his name? Yes. You pussy. And then over on, um, and oh, what's his name? Todd? Dickhead. Chuck Todd. Chuck Todd. He looks like a weasel. Another one. And over on CNN is the, is the, the, Wolf. the, the wussy piece of shit. Anderson. Douchebag face. Anderson Cooper. Well, forget about CNN. CNN is crap. Yeah. No, they're it, all it crap. It doesn't have anybody watching it either. In my book, they're all crap now. They're well, all... they all are. They owe to corporations. Why wouldn't they be, be crap? They're crap. I don't think Donald Trump's election as president would necessarily be the doomsday bomb, many think. Much of the criticism has been unfair. Yes, he was given a privileged start. Good for him. He was able to create an astonishing real estate empire. Good. He used the existing laws to routinely remedy business ills. Again, not a problem. Trump changed his political leanings and decided to run for president. Why not? He has now permanently changed his party. It's hard to argue that change wasn't in order. You could legitimately claim that he is obnoxious, tacky, egotistical, but that doesn't disqualify him from doing as he pleases. He called uh, Elizabeth Warren goofy. <laughs> the goof well, there's another example of why, you know, I mean, he can't see through something for the to see the truth so he makes because elizabeth warren is telling the truth so he makes fun of their their physical appearance yeah whatever you know, like when he was well, really well, well, uh, oh, i look, don't look. understand i don't remember remember this yeah. i don't remember <laughs> what i said I well you know hey you know what when i'm when i'm upset enough i i, I do that too i can't i can't play innocent but it's funny. I hey, I have compassion for the guy, but the way Donald Trump, <laughs> the way he made fun of him. First of all, I saw the Muslim Americans jumping up and down and cheering, and it was, it was not just one area of Hudson County. Believe me, it was another. Area. It was Patterson, New Jersey, Main Avenue. They showed it. And then they buried the video. He is a masterful campaigner, has amassed a huge and loyal following, and has become the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party. Hey, nobody laughed at the Taj Mahal. Remember the, the, the image I put up about the Taj Mahal? With, uh, all fancy and everything with the lights? The only thing I, I couldn't take was that ugly Jan Brewer. Oh, what a, that, she's got that dried beef jerky face with that big, obnoxious, phony smile. El Presidente she's of like, Mexico says like Hillary, he like, will not pay for the wall. She's like Hillary, actually. Okay. Postmenopausal bitch. So I don't oh, know how Mr. Trump is going to get that deal. Oh, Mexico kind of like scratched the middle of their forehead with the middle finger like yeah. this. Ain't paying for no stinking wall. Oh. There's a there's a food show on the uh, Create Channel. Pa Patty's Mexican Table. Ooh, sounds good. And she was in Mexico on this particular show I uh, came upon, and she was showing she was in San 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 Miguel, Miguel I think San Miguel, and uh, she's showing all the best parts of of Mexico and the markets and all of this stuff. Of course. And then I ask myself a simple question. If it's so great, why are they coming across the border? Listen, when Anthony Bourdain went to Colombia and they gave a tour of um, like Medellin, Colombia and everything, they had a representative from the government with Anthony Bourdain and they, they painted a very different picture. Sweet. That, that Colombians paint when they when you talk to them, they painted a very different picture 
of um, of Colombia, and the same thing with yeah, this to woman. To attract tourism, you know. This woman yeah. in Mexico. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Now, Mexico, like Italy, has um, different food and sometimes different customs, per, depending on the region you're in. They have regional foods. It's quite fascinating, you know. I mean, I love Mexican food, <laughs> and I love the parties that you know, the parades with the the beautiful multi and the lucha libre. Lucha libre. No, I'm talking about like the they call them sugar skulls. They have all this uh, fancy, colorful uh, skeleton masks that they paint different colors. And I have a couple of beautiful Mexican blankets at home that I had gotten uh, years ago. But anyway, um. In the markets, they sell Lucha Libre masks. Well, they're not <laughs> pro professional ones. They're like, you know, for the kids. Yeah. Kids. You can't wear a, I, would, I don't recommend, I tell, I tell uh, Bobby, uh, yeah, I don't recommend mask wearing in public these days. It's a good way to get the cops on your, on your, yeah. ass, your ass. You're going to freak people out. So, yeah. like, you know, but... Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so Trump, uh, well, Trump is like, uh, he wants to be a fascist dictator, I guess. He he says, oh, they, they will do what I say. Oh, oh you know, okay. Well, he, he's, it's probably his uh, inexperience with the law. He doesn't understand some certain things, just like with the nuclear stuff. Carpet he doesn't bombing, understand yeah. what, a, what, what a nuke does, you know? Well, they were all flexing their muscles at the, uh, the Republican debate, and you know they're yeah. all they're all talking tough on foreign policy. Ah, eh, carpet bomb them. The other one says, "Yeah, carpet bomb them. Nuke them. Nuke them. Carpet bomb them." Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's like. Uh, uh, and then Trump was so happy when his security was tossing people out. You know, get them out of here. He I'll punch them in the face. He get them out of here, huh? He just did one today. I was watching it before you came. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Get them out of here. Four times he said. Oh, Hillary doesn't like to be challenged either at her rallies. There's a, a black girl was trying to debate her, and uh -huh. uh, she had her removed. And that did not sit well with the, um, the civil rights... Uh, and the Black Lives Matter organization that did well, well, it's a this. little <laughs> late right now because you got all those blacks in South Carolina and whatever down south to vote for her. Hey, it's a little right, you know, listen, to know that the real truth now. It doesn't matter what race, what gender, what nationality you are, what sexual preference. Hey. If you're poor or low income, Hillary Clinton brings huh? nothing to the table. Correct. She offers you nothing. Just listen to what she uh, what she is for. Her policies, her plans. Nothing for the poor. The poor cannot gain anything. So you have to do what I do. First comes priorities. First comes survival. My loyalty and my voting is for my wallet. Mm -hmm. If you're not rich, you got to do what you got to do. You got to vote for those that have your best interests at heart. You know, I know it's a little dramatic, but you know, with with, with Americans, you got to really, mm. you got to really uh, concentrate the laser beam of knowledge forcefully. Otherwise, they don't get it. All right, go ahead. He is a masterful campaigner. Right. Has amassed a huge and loyal following and has become the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party. He entertains. By his own admission. He entertains me tremendously. He does. He's very, very entertaining. You know what? I, I, it's very hard. I mean, I know it's. I, I, I know he wants to cut taxes for for the rich. I know I'm never going to vote for a conservative or a Republican ever, but in some ways I like the guy. I mean, he's Donald Trump. He's, he's you know, his well, daughter's if hot. If you didn't like him per se, at least a little, I don't think he'd ever get any deal done. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, I think, I think negotiating and Having lunch with him yeah. and uh, a drink or two and, and shooting, chewing the fat with him, I think he's 
he's he's he's great to have around. You know what yeah, I mean? They're great to it. deal with. I mean, he, he's not an idiot. He he's he's smart. Um, he uh, uh, or he wouldn't be where he, where he is. He's just unfortunately he doesn't. You're not clued in on a lot of stuff. He's no, he's not clued in, and his loyalty is still not for the little guy. I mean, the guy was born rich. He just doesn't have that empathy and compassion for the little guy. Now, FDR was born with bucks in a family with big bucks, but he became disabled with polio, and then that, I think that humbled FDR. It changed him. Yeah. By his own admission, much of what he has said thus far yeah. has been to gain popularity. He has articulated extreme ideas on race and religion. That's his right. We should be grateful that he hasn't held back. He presented himself honestly. That's also good. Now, does anyone believe that if elected, he would be able to bypass existing laws, the Constitution, the system of checks and balances in order to bring his flamboyant ideas to <laughs> fruition? That is not going to happen. The only scenario under which that could happen would be if he were able to construct a military coup. Possible, of course, just not likely. Perhaps once his wild dreams are dashed, his views would moderate, and he would become a pretty good national manager. I think our problem is, should not be with foreign policy so much in the military. Our problem, problems really are domestic. We, we got to... No kidding, but those are the ones that are avoided. Yeah, I noticed that. What would Republicans? Yeah. They don't want to put the money into it. You see, uh, Obama's been bitching for seven years to get money to uh, build the bridges. Uh, oh, the, the, oh the I didn't know that. Name. Obama cares about infrastructure? Absolutely. But they never mentioned that he cares about... It's a job bill. It'll create 13 million jobs. Yeah, but we need the infrastructure rebuild. No kidding. Now forget about the job bill. We need it. We need it. And what about the rail system? It's pathetic. It's that too. We got the Chattanooga choo-choo. You choo -choo. got to derail every goddamn week here. Nah, we got the, the dinosaurs like Amtrak and, you know, choo -choo 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 -choo. You know the, the whole world has got high-speed uh, monorails, for God's sakes. Even Disneyland has a Bullet monorail. train. Bullet train. Uh -huh. The light rails would alleviate so much pollution and traffic. I'm not even talking about cross-country. I'm talking about just local light rails. Yeah. Little electric. But the Republicans won't give the money. Char okay? tro not trolleys. Uh, yeah, like light rails. Uh, uh, they modern prefer day. to give the money to Wall Street. Okay. Because they're getting paid off. That would be tolerable. If he proves incompetent, the other two branches of government may be able to pick up some of the slack and get the country through the next four years. Does anybody remember the last time we had a president who spoke like a sixth grader? <laughs> That's pretty bad. They call him a sixth grader. President George W. Bush was considered a plain speaker. Yeah, maybe him. And sounded at times like a sixth grader. We're going to get them dar people, for folks that knocked those them dar buildings down. He was perhaps the least articulate president in American history. Oh, without a doubt. Without At the a doubt. time, he was heavily criticized by the press for his speaking style. Bush started wars in the Middle East that we still have not recovered from. Well, he was Cheney's puppet. How quickly we forget. Now Cheney wants to jump on the Trump bandwagon, I hear. Now, Donald Trump is being praised for his plain speech and complimented for speaking like a sixth grader. History repeats itself because we forget it. Uh, Donald Trump does not sound stupid like G.W. Bush. 
Donald Trump has a hell of a lot more going upstairs than G.W. Bush. Do not confuse those two. Why would we put Trump in office? Because he will be better than two Clintons in office. Uh, I, uh, you know what? I'm not going to really disagree with him on that, even though I don't want any of them. But I really can't stand the Clinton dynasty. I really loathe it. When Bill Clinton was running for president, Hillary Clinton told us we were getting two for one. Recently in Kentucky, Hillary hinted this can happen again. And the world keeps laughing. And she also, um, she also keeps on reminding everyone about having the first female president of the United States. I think it was over 600, almost 700 times she mentions it in her campaign. Whereas Bernie That's never... That's her only card she's running on. Bernie Sanders never mentions about being the first Jewish president. Barack Obama never personally mentioned patting himself on the back as being the first African-American president. But Hillary Clinton keeps on playing that gender card, the woman in the White House. And I believe that uh, Donald Trump will make America great again through renewed military strength, a strong economy, and limited government. Oh, gosh. Trump's strength is that he wants to put America first. And I believe Trump will win the grudging respect of our allies and enemies and receive national support in his fight to protect and defend America. Protect and, and our God-given freedoms. Protect and defend America from what? <laughs> so, so his this this person who who wrote this, their idea of putting America first is to uh, have a, have a strong military force and take over the world. We already have there a is strong military force, I and we do own the world. Nine hundred military bases around the world that sounds like an occupation to me but but how is how is um nothing was said about the economy the job market uh uh the standard of living of the average american uh uh the, of course infrastructure it's always about military strength with these right wingers these tea baggers it's always about military strength Making America great again, but it's not, it, it's never domestic. It's always abroad. Well, they haven't even shown that America ain't great now. They always, they're always throwing that in, that we need a stronger military to protect our freedom. My question is, from what? Back in the FDR's day, the same thing. We need a bigger navy! We don't have enough ships in the Navy! It's the same old, same oh, old. Gosh. The military is a job producer for the private sector. You see how many trillions okay. of taxpayers' money uh, were wasted on that plane that cannot be used? The F-35. Don't you see on commercials on TV right now? Northrop Grumman and Boeing are running commercials? You, you can eradicate a lot of poverty in the United States with uh, that, those trillions of dollars, believe me, and free education, you know? Yeah. But the, the, the point is, the point is, even if you had the free education, you'll ha it'll be like India. You'll have all these college graduates with no jobs. Good. There's no That's jobs. Okay. They can come over to America and get to, with the H-1Bs. And get jobs. And they're doing that. They're importing. Well, well, yeah, there you go. They're importing. They're, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of this major company that's laying off a lot of people, thousands and thousands, only to import H-1B immigrants to come and work. Let me think. i got to think about who this is. It's, 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 it's a famous company. But this is what they're doing collectively. Ford is going to make a, pro a, a factory in, in Mexico. Ford? Ford, yes. 
not just Nabisco. This is Ford. Nabisco has already moved over there. So you're laying, or right, this is what happens. Carrier. They lay off. Carrier, the air conditioning. Air conditioning. They're going too. They lay off thousands and thousands of workers to make room for uh, lower paying H-1B immigrants. Mm -hmm. Then they force you to train your replacement because if you don't, you don't get your pay. So you have to train the people that are going to replace you that when you become unemployed, they come in, they work cheaper and mm -hmm. they replace mm -hmm. you. So you're training them yeah. to get whatever pay is left. Yep. And um, that's what my my sister's going through now. Yep. She that's has what they're to train, all going through. She has to train her replacement. That's it. You know, and an H-1B. But Why does that happen? It's happening because of the right-wing... Uh, controlled uh, 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 Washington and deregulation. Uh, deregulation. And deregulation. You well, see, if there's a law for something, there can be a law against something. Oh, yeah. Okay? It all depends on the people who are writing the laws. And, and, the, and the Republicans consider making America great again as... as being, uh, 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 being a bunch of fascists trying to take over, trying to invade all the countries that have uh, natural resources. Mm -hmm. uh, natural and, and resources. As far as, and as far as the military, uh, not being great or et cetera, et cetera. Military is fine. It's in good shape. It's it's over. But it's bloated, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is, as Trump and them point out. We're fighting people with box cutters, with carpet bombing. Living in tents. And living in tents. With carpet bombing and nuclear weapons. And therein lies the problem. Okay? You know what it's like? It's like um, a house infested with bed bugs. Ah! And you go in and say, oh, I'm an exterminator. Hey, where's your bed? Oh, there they are. And you start stomping on a couple of bed bugs here and there. You're not going to you're not gonna get rid of them that way. No, no. you got to do whatever they do. What, what they fumigate? Whatever they, they do. do. They close the house up and then they fumigate. Right. You can't right. J just by stomping on a bed bug here and a bed bug there. Well, let's take, instead of bed bugs, let's take ants. Yeah. If you got a poison... That the ants can take back to the to the mommy, the queen, the, the colony, queen, and she dies. There goes the colony. There goes the colony. Right. The so same thing with uh, with uh, with ISIS. Exactly. They they're all spread out. They're all infested in 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 all these different areas. How you gonna? You gotta have special ops. You go in the a door like they did with uh, 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 Bin Laden. And you pop them off. Well, you got to know where they are. But you don't need a whole goddamn brigade. Use the friggin' with nuclear weapons to do that. Yeah, use your satellites. You use high technology to so use dr uh, spy drones. Sp yes, spy. Exactly. Use spy drones. Keep an eye on them. You got to know where they are, though. You yes. know, but uh, you know. But anyway, we're gonna go to lunch now, and you will uh, be joined by our commercial voiceover specialist. William Hamilton Morrow the third. Seven bells for our break. There's no halftime show, so don't mm -hmm. you know, don't expect that. But we'll be back after Bill Morrow with the balance of our show. Well, okay. All right. With the balance of our show. I didn't bring any tree nuts. I brought two. The salmon salad sandwiches Ooh. on 12 grain bread. No, no tree nuts, oh, which is not to be confu confused with ground nuts or bush nuts. Tree nuts. Bush is a nut, nut farmer. Yeah. Uh, is it the proper no, word? Is it, is the proper word pecans or pecans? Uh, down south they say pe uh, pecans. You know the pe you know this beer we say pecan. You know there's a pecan beer made in Mississippi? Oh boy. I think it's called Magnolia. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. A pecan flavored uh craft beer, yes. Um I look forward to trying it. Wonderful. All right. We'll see you.
know you are. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need newsletter censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow the third, for doing promo and commercial. Now we will return to the balance of our show, Progressive Discussions. <coughs> Progressive Warriors Unite. <laughs> Earthlings! Oh, I hate them. Are in for a treat on Monday. Oh. As Mercury makes a relatively rare transit of the sun. My grandfather used to call it Mercury. 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 Hey, so did Harold Camping. The idiot that, when he was alive, he said Mercury. The solar system's smallest, innermost planet will resemble a black, round dot as it passes in front of our big, bright star. I have a beautiful photo, close-up of Mercury. It's a, it's a beautiful planet. The last time Mercury crossed directly between the Earth and the Sun was in 2006. You know, it's like a kaleidoscope of colors. And it won't happen again until 2019. And then, until 2032. NASA says the event occurs only about 13 times a century. Louis Mayo, program manager at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Green Belt, Maryland considers it a big deal. Astronomers get excited when any two things come close to each other in the heavens. The eastern United States and Canada will see the entire seven and a half hour transit, as will most of South America. Western Europe and the westernmost most Africa. I am sure we will get plenty of exquisite photographs of this occurrence, this transition. Uh, uh, did they have something that replaced the Hubble telescope, or they still use the Hubble? Still using the Hubble and the Kepler. Okay. Yeah, and I think the, the NASA funding sort of went on a back burner, I, I think. In the western portion of North America, stargazers can join in Midway at sunrise, while those in Eastern Europe, Central Asia, Middle East, and most of Africa will have to call it quits early when the sun goes down. Australia will have to sit this one out all together. Hmm. Forget the eclipse glasses. 
at barely 3,000 miles across, Mercury would be too small to spot. You'll need binoculars or telescopes equipped with proper solar flip filters to protect your eyes. Look for Mercury south of the Sun's equator. The planet might appear as though it's hardly moving, but in reality it will be zooming past the Sun at 106 miles per hour. <clears throat> Three spacecraft will observe the transit. So if you can't catch it with your own eyes, check out the Space Agency online. NASA promises images close to real time from its Solar Dynamic Observatory. Tell cool. Jerry. Cool. Astronomers have been observing Mercury transit since the 1600s. Monday's occurrence will allow scientists to fine-tune instruments aboard solar observatories like SDO, the Solar Dynamic Observatory, and learn even more about the Sun. We have too much light pollution in our area for astronomy. You have to live out in the boonies. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know. Unfortunately, you can't have all this... Unless you're... Uh, glare, you know. In the observatory. Oh, they're usually out there, you know. Uh-huh. I think, I think usually in the, uh, in the desert. Out High west. on a mountain someplace. Yeah, where, there, where there's no... The mountain. There's no um, uh -huh. cities or, or, or lights. It's pitch black at night around the observatory. I think we should have one in, uh, what's that, uh, what's that high, uh, place in Peru? Um, no, Machu Picchu? Is you mean the, in the Andes? The Andes Mountains? Yeah. Maybe we should put one up there, you know? Because that's way up in the clouds, man. Well, you know, with... There's a city with, up there. With, with, with satellite space telescopes oh but that's even better i don't i don't see the need for no there will be no obstructions there yeah i don't see the need for any observatories yeah because well. there's no a atmospheric obstruction of mm -hmm. the of the view now is hummingbird time oh i love i love hummingbirds if you haven't put up a feeder what the hell are you waiting for yeah, that's if there's hummingbirds in your area. <laughs> these inexpensive feeders provide great looks at these dynamic tiny birds. And all they require is sugar water. With, with, a little, with some red food coloring. Or if you want to attract Orioles, orange food coloring. But I see them in the dollar store all the time. You can get them for a buck, but the whole thing is... I tried and... No hummingbirds ever uh, showed up. Ever showed up. Oh, that's bad news. None. Bad news. I have cardinals. I have blue jays. I have a uh, robin redbreast, robins, rockin' robins. Tweet, because, tweet, twiddly tweet. Because squirrels deflowered my last feeder. They either removed or ate the little yellow plastic buds. Yeah, it looks like a flower. Squir How did they get? Yeah, I know they're plastic. Yeah, yeah it's With a, a yellow it, center. The feeder is is a red is red. The uh, the container the the uh, that holds the water is clear, and where the holes are, there's like a fake little plastic yellow flower. How the hell did they? How were they able to to hold such a feeder unless the person hung it somewhere on a tree where the squirrel can do that? Well, those squirrels can get in anything, man, I tell you. Yeah, I know. They, they try to dig up my sage in my dig herb up. garden. See? Only the sage they like. 
but I put I, I remedy that situation. I put a dollar store fishnet hamper over the sage, and now the little buck tooth bastards can't mm -hmm. get at it. They also uh, ate my sister's pumpkins. Oh, nice! You know the Halloweeny pot. Yeah. I says I said to my sister, "You're wasting your your money putting pumpkins outside." Yeah, it looks like it. I had to buy a new one. While I was at it, I thought I'd get to it. Oh God! Just, just hang them in the right place. After all, I really enjoy watching hummingbirds. And if I'm refilling one with uh, one part granulated sugar and four parts water, I might as well fill two feeders while I'm at it. My my aunt hangs her hummingbird feeders outside of the uh, kitchen window, so uh, from the, where the kitchen. Oh, yeah, especially when she's washing dishes, she can wash. Yeah, the, yeah, where the kitchen sink is, and they eventually they're very brazen birds. They will get used to human presence. One landed on, I saw a video of a hummingbird landing on somebody's hand. I saw a video of a bunch of them landing on the person. They're very brazen, they're, they're very, they're not shy, you know, they're, uh, but they're really beautiful creatures, really. You wonder how they gay, can have all that energy. Well, those wings really beat, man. They, they need a lot of nectar, a lot of sugar. They need a, 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 the opposite of an Atkins diet. The they total, sure do. The total opposite. They need a lot of carbs because they look at how the, how many times they beat their wings uh -huh. to be able to hover, go in all directions, up, down, backwards. <coughs> the first feeder is the conventional flying saucer shape. One that I will hang on a feeder pole that has a baffle to keep the squirrels away. There you go. The last thing I need is a hyperactive squirrel on a sugar rush. See, I didn't, uh. I didn't have my feeder hung where squirrels can get at it. I just didn't have any damn hummingbirds come around. You know. The second feeder is one of those cool suction cup window feeders yeah but when they, they eventually dry out the suction cups they yeah make. they provide up close viewing of these little gymnasts and I think our cat Pook has seen enough birds and squirrels at the window not to have a conniption oh huh? some hummingbirds will fight they'll, they'll dive bomb the cats my wife will no doubt plant more red blooming native plants like cardinal flowers again this spring. Bee bomb. And hope the deer don't destroy that. They have uh, what they call hummingbird mix. They're, they're perennial wildflowers and I think bee bomb is one of the flowers. Uh, they're attracted to the sweet, you know, uh, red or orange or yellow. They're all, all in the same family. Flowers. So that the hummingbirds can hang around the yard even longer. Here are two important hummingbird feeder tips. Tip one. Don't use Don't that. dye the water red. Oh. And they'll but they'll still drink from it? In hopes of attracting hummingbirds. The feeders themselves are red. So no point in gilding the lily. Buying special red colored hemming, hummingbird nectar is a waste of money. And adding red dye is a waste of time. Why add chemicals? Tip two. No honey. Instead of boiling the water for the concoction to impede mold growth, use distilled water. The goal of boiling water 
is to delay its fermentation by removing impurities. Distilled water costs less than a dollar a gallon and you can prepare large batch which should last you about a week. Well, if you, if you get a gallon of distilled water, you simply um, remove about a cup of it. So when you get a funnel and you pour in your, your white sugar, you know, you can get a whole, uh, you can get a lot of sugar in there. Like, what, what did he say, the, the ratio? One to four. One to four? Yeah. There really is no such thing as a fun fact unless you are under the age of seven or are too easily amused. Interesting and mostly true. Almost every hummingbird you're going to see in your backyard feeder in North Jersey will be a ruby throated hummingbird. Yeah, there are different varieties. The males wear bright ruby bibs because they are sloppy eaters. The males of all birds have the coloration, have the beauty. The females do not need them. Mm, females are very drab. Rare hummingbirds have been seen in New Jersey and New York City. If you think you saw a rare one in your backyard, really, don't flatter yourself or get too excited. In all likelihood, it's a ruby throat, and that ain't chopped liver. I'll be happy to see any hummingbird. If you do find a rare hummingbird, please take a photo and let me know. I'd love to be proved wrong. Well, I'll do better than that. I'll take a video. I'll give it a shot. Basics. <coughs> Put up your feeder as soon as possible. If the hummingbirds aren't in your area, they will be any day now. Oh, really? Fill the feeder with a mixture of one part granulated sugar four parts water. Change the water every few days. Hell no. Especially when the weather is hot and sunny. Okay. Otherwise the sugar water will ferment. And, what, and then what would happen? They get, get, they'll get, they'll they'll, die. They'll start farting? They the will get germs. Oh, that's too much work. I'm not, I'm not putting up the, the hummingbird feeder. I'd rather buy uh, uh, black sunflower seeds for the cardinals. It's easier. Keep your feeders up for two weeks after you see your last hummingbird in the fall. The hell. They may still be migrating hummingbirds in need of a pit stop. Well, let them pit stop at other people's feeders and, and, and gardens. I'm not changing no freaking water every two days. I got enough work to do. What the hell's the matter with you? That's terrible. Wow. What do you think? I got? Uh, you think I don't have anything to do? That's terrible. Yeah, I think. You gotta take care of the hummingbirds, I'll take man. care of my cardinals, man. I got, I got them the same mating cardinals. And every year they go up, they go up in a tall pine tree in the back. They got, I got cardinals all year round. Saying this pains me. Pains you? especially as a social studies teacher for the past 17 years. Oh. But we are not a democracy. No. I learned this by campaigning for Bernie Sanders during the New York primary. I love Sanders because he is not bought by big money. New York got screwed. Sanders got screwed because he did. He, he won every, th every area of New York State except the city where the shenanigans took place. That 
is enough to motivate me to knock on people's doors and persuade people to vote for him. Well, I couldn't do that because I end up getting into a fight. When people bust my balls, and then I want to grab them by the neck and wring it. The experience gave me hope that citizens can change the system and that doing so through face-to-face -face conversation helps <laughs> lead the way. They're imbeciles. You kidding me, man? The general, you're talking about the general public. I used to work serving the general public. I know what it's like. In the process, I made new friends and met interesting people. I listened to arguments for and against Sanders. I was learning. It learning. opened my eyes. There is nothing against Sanders that is, re is realistic. I felt as if my voice mattered and that I was part of the democratic process. But on election day, those hopes were dashed. I realized that many of the people I met were not heard at the polls. Many were not registered. To change parties in New York, you need to do that six months in advance. See? You see the roadblock that was thrown up? Others had votes purged. An estimated 100,000 in Brooklyn. Ah, that's why they were mentioning a recount for Brooklyn. Pro provisionary ballots? Whatever they were, they were purged. They were thrown away. Ah. And you know that debate was in Brooklyn where, where they were cheering for Bernie constantly and Hillary didn't like it. Now, do you see how the voter fraud, the people orchestrating the voter fraud are getting away with it. Nobody's doing anything about it. Well, they are, but not proactively enough. Because we don't have accountability in this country. Okay? It's like you have a right to vote, but if the establishment doesn't like right. who you're going to vote they for, can erase it. they erase it. So it's but like they could in a in a in a in a, in a in a totalitarian society they will erase your memory. This is why the the woman I'm I'm assuming it's a woman, it might not be. This is why the person it ain't the person said that we do not live in a democracy. That is correct, sir. Because if we did, one every, man, one vote. Every vote will be counted for. If we did, independents would be allowed to vote in primaries. Yeah. Cheating allowed. Corruption it, allowed. It planted a dark tree, not a seed, of doubt in my mind. We are not a democracy. It was as if the people I met on that day of canvassing did not exist. Worse, the experience confirmed my fears. Party bosses control the election. They created election laws. Well, this whole thing about the Electoral College and superdelegates, these are all, in my opinion, these are all roadblocks thrown in front of we the people and administer the election for their benefits. There you go. The nominees will promote the old order. Gerrymandering, flooding big money into our oligarchy, and creating laws that fail the public interest. Yeah. We need national election laws that empower all people to vote. Only then will our voice matter. You see, in reality, Al Gore really won that election against G.W. Bush in the popular vote, okay? But because of the political corruption then, he didn't win. But in reality, he really won. 
Bernie Sanders, in reality, um, one would be would be winning by a landslide if the independents were allowed to vote in the primaries and if you did not have voter fraud. So in reality, the good guys will always win, but not in this case. But you got to be, see, Americans have to be proactively involved in holding people accountable for their actions, which they're not. They're not. We have no accountability. No accountability. Listening to music might benefit baby's brain function. Oh boy. Well, anything that shuts them up would be great. Past study results on the positive effects of classical music mm. on infants' brain development yeah. have been mixed. It's not my cup of tea, kids, you know, so. Researchers study, kids grow up to be adults. Nah, still, they're not, they're, they're annoying, they're annoying. They're annoying, but they grow up to be adults and they get more annoying. Get the because hell they have power. Get the hell away from me, you little bastard. You bother me. Remember W.C. Fields? The control group played with toys a dozen different times for 15 minutes, while the other babies and their parents tapped out beats of a waltz-like rhythm. Yeah, I'll tap out beats. <laughs> this rhythm, a triple meter, was chosen because it is typically difficult for babies to learn. In subsequent brain scans, babies exposed to music and tapping out beats seem to have improved brain processing of music patterns and speech sounds compared with the control group. Researchers said more work needs to be done to see how long this kind of brain boost due to music lasted. Oh God. Yeah, and I remember when my uh, my niece Brianna was a baby, she um, wouldn't stop crying. They were visiting and she wouldn't stop crying so my brother had to put in, uh, at that time we had VCRs, he had to put in this, mo the most boring, childish baby thing just to pacify her stop her from crying it was like who who thinks of these things that uh, you know like the, you, you see some of the most idiotic cartoons for for younger children so stupid <clears throat> night shifts instead of teaching them about Wilhelm Reich and and uh, and and uh, 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 Nikola Tesla. Nikola, Nikola Tesla, you know, or Descartes, Isaac Newton. Yeah, but he was only, you know, yeah. the, the, da Vinci. The one, yeah. Well, there's one. I'm talking about a guy who, you know, just wasn't now known for one thing. I mean, he was a. He was a mind. Yeah, he was he a had, real mind. He had versatility. Yeah, yeah. He's very versatile. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about people who stole other people's ideas yeah. like Alexander Graham Bell. Yeah. It doesn't deserve any credit yeah. for the phone. But anyway. Night shifts can cause heart disease in women. Oy. A new study said. What if they're naturally nocturnal people? Adding to growing research suggesting that night shifts can be detrimental to health. You know, getting up early in the morning is not all that's cracked up to be, unless you live on a farm. Really, if you saw the, the idiotic, depressing uh, daytime television shows out there, all the cool stuff is late at night. You know, I'm nocturnal. I mean, night is night is more fun than day, hands down. 
On the night shift, on the night shift. The study focused on the health data of 300,000 nurses and former nurses. Yeah, they don't give sponge baths anymore. Not like they used to. Nurses who worked the night shifts for 10 or more years had a 15% greater risk of coronary heart disease. Was it uh, um, um, Peter North? The, the nurse says, "I'm not. Gonna, we're not going to give you a sponge bath. We're going to give you a tongue bath." Anyway, I digress. I'm sorry. Even controlling for other heart disease risk factors like smoking and no exercise, the effects of night shifts persisted. Not the night shift. Younger women who work night shifts for a decade or more had a 27% higher risk of heart disease. Oh, what, what about prostitutes? They work a night shift, right? The women working many years of night shifts tended to weigh more. Smoke. And were less likely to be married or have children. No, because most of the world uh, is is uh, usually um, diurnal, uh, you know. They're, they're working in a the day. They're up in a day and sleeping well, we at night. Well, we have circadian rhythms. Uh, they don't get to, they only, they can only meet men that are like night shift men. Because how, how do you find the time to, to, to date? Researchers theorized that the interrupted biological rhythms and decreased social support of night shift work could be to blame. The study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. All right. We learn something new on every show and progressive discussions. Uh, How we doing on time? We got time for uh, one more or two more. Let's see. I'm looking for one of those easy ones, but I can't find. Oh, it. you mean uh, Amy Dickinson? So, Angie Dickinson? Yeah. Or, um, no. So no. I might as well go to this guy. Okay. <coughs> A mother duck. Quack quack. Has grown attached. Uh to a Michigan elementary school's courtyard, returning each year to lay her eggs and then walk the hallways with her ducklings. Let me tell you something. I was at the park and a wild male and female mallard duck was eating tortilla chips right out of my hand and she and the ducks gently turned their heads sideways and took them out of my fingers. They they gently waiting for me to feed them one chip at a time. And uh, most people just throw them on the ground. But no, no, I decided I'm going to feed them. I'm going to see how tame like these wild ducks were. And they they took it right out of my hands. The cutest things. With the help of students and staff to safely get to the nearby pond. You know, the colony of wild mallard ducks you have over here by the creek is getting larger and larger. Well, I would think so. M in maybe, summertime. maybe the Audubon Society should declare that as a sanctuary for them. I'm telling you, it's getting bigger. And they, they like that. This one area of the creek where it's fast moving and deeper, I think. That's because the one woman over there feeds them grain in the morning. Oh, she. Oh, so she, they all end up at her house in the morning. Oh, hundreds, hundreds of ducks. And then they tell all their buddies. That's what I think the one cat is doing here. He's telling some of his other friends, and then they come around to look for food. They're moochers. They're well, moochers. I'm going to feed them. You know, that's not my responsibility. So my uh, my uh, the the old lady that lives upstairs from me is correct. 
They do tell all their buddies. Yeah. They must communicate, you know, in some way, shape, or form to do that. Wow. The duck named Vanessa Vanessa. has appeared at Village Elementary School in Heartland, Michigan for the past 13 years. Vanessa Del Rio. Vanessa Del Quaco. And her latest waddle through the school took place last week. The duck flies into the closed off courtyard where kids in the surrounding classrooms can take a peek out the window to watch. And she crawls under a specific shrub, digs out her nest, and lays her eggs. I don't have to peek at any wildlife. We have Canadian geese, mallard ducks. They, they're all used to human presence. They, they, they just, they're like one foot away from you. They don't care. It's there that she waits for them to hatch. Yeah, the males are beautiful, man. They have this shiny, iridescent, jade green head. After the ducklings appear, now retired teacher Ruth Dara and others tape black construction paper along the walls creating a clear path for the ducks to get to the nearby pond outside. Teachers and staff make sure the students are out of Vanessa's path so they don't frighten her. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's so unusual but everyone gets so invested in this duck because how cool is it that she comes back each and every year. This year's hallway waddle took place on Thursday. The duck waited by the courtyard door for it to be unlocked and waddled with her ducklings through the school within minutes. She has it down by now after 13 years, Dara said. You know, um, the cardinals in my yard, they did not fly south for the winter. They stood all year round. Maybe it's because this winter was mild. I, uh, maybe it's climate change. I'm not sure. But I mean, you know the, 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 the postcard, the, the greeting card with the re bright red cardinal on the snow? Well, that's what I saw this winter. That's what I saw. It was stunning. It was like, wow, they didn't fly south. So I, I, I got to get a sack of... Uh, they have a big sack of, of uh, black oiled sunflower seeds. It's like a huge sack for 10 bucks, much bigger than your, your dried cat food, you know, um, at mm -hmm. all these. But, um, one more? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if it's not that long. It's a couple small. All right. The Republican establishment doesn't realize it yet, but Donald Trump is the best thing that has happened to the Republican Party in a long time. Yeah, that's an interesting statement. Once the party goes down to a crushing defeat in the general election with Trump at the head of the ticket and also loses the Senate, maybe even the House, Republicans will realize that the demographics of this country have changed and the party must become more inclusive. And they, might, and they have to start paying attention and listening to the mainstream Americans. And the Tea Party. Wow. Well, they have to listen to the people. If, if, ah! they, if, if, the, if, the, if the election, if Donald Trump is um, the, the unintended sabotage of the Republican Party, then that, will, that would bring the Republican Party 
uh, to its knees pretty much right rock they would hit rock bottom so when you hit rock bottom what happens people become humble they become humble they turn nice not when they're on top of the world then they, they act like assholes and douchebags but I mean when they're when they're down on the bottom they get humble observations from a lifelong Republican Hillary Clinton is a two-term senator cabinet secretary graduate of Yale Law School yeah Donald Trump couldn't pass a high school civics test because he thinks judges sign bills. You know, they always talk about Hillary's experience, but hey, Bernie Sanders is no slouch. He has been United States Senator for quite some time now. But Sanders has something that Clinton doesn't have. What's that? It's called character. And integrity. Too. Judgment. Integrity. Okay. Integrity. You can't get Character Bernie. Character and judgment. You can't get any dirt on Bernie Sanders. He has. He's totally, total pure integrity. No, but he was a senator for decades, and but they're always talking about Hillary's record, Hil Hillary's experience. Yeah, he, but the guy. Remember Katrina, the horse guy that was put in charge by George W. Bush. Just because you're the head of a program or a, what, a, a whatever doesn't mean you know anything. This is what happens when the Republicans get in, Democrats get in, they put in people in power who are going to do their bidding, it but also, not the best for the country it also doesn't, or for that program. It, it also doesn't mean you've done anything. You may not know anything. You might not have expertise, but also you might not not have accomplished anything. Yeah, they used to the do head. that in the old days with the kings and the princes and and etc. They put their family in charge. Big deal. She was Secretary of State and Senator for two terms. So what does that mean? What is her record? What are what are the fruits of her labor? But well, they she don't screwed up big time in Libya. You know what? I I, I I I honestly think today's U.S. media they, they have they have scripts and teleprompter prompters and they have to they have to um, pretty much uh, act according to their script. They have they have uh, roles like they were in a movie. You know, it's not there's nothing there's no unbiased journalism. Well, Channel 7 certainly can't come out and say something bad about Disney, can they? Since Disney owns them. What about, what Jeez. about, what about uh, MSNBC who supposedly had some progressive <laughs> people on it back in the day, supposedly? I see that most of their programs now, they're getting a Republican or a conservative on them. Even Rachel Maddow has Rick Santorum on there. Rachel. And Rick Santorum comes on sycophantically and fawningly saying, well, that's the only reason I come on your show, I is think because Rachel, you're so smart. I think Rachel Maddow was stick mm. to two Koch brothers' cocks in her mouth and, and George Soros' is a, a, a dick in, in her asshole. I think, I think she's totally sold out. That other wussy... Um, uh, Chris Matthews is a total wimp and a wussy. Um, I mean, Ed Schultz now, uh, well, we don't hear from Keith Overman, right? He doesn't have any show? Keith Overman? Overman? Ed Schultz, doesn't he, doesn't he uh, 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 disgruntledly bash MSNBC? He's always... I don't hear Ed Schultz anymore anywhere. No, he has his own streaming thing. Well, I don't see him. Why doesn't I don't hear him? Why doesn't Aura TV, you know, that'll be a great idea, Aura TV, Hi. to pick them up, Oberman and uh, and Ed Schultz. I should leave them a message. I mean, uh, it's like the biggest network for internet streamers. Well. You know, for people that can't get on the mainstream. 
uh, anymore because they uh, they won't sell out. Anyway, finish up this article where we're, we're Clinton has an ideology that I disagree with completely. Trump has no ideology. Trump's ideology is Trump. The art, the art of the deal, the art of the deal. Clinton's incredible hubris has led to breathtaking lapses of judgment. Trump is dangerous. Not just abrogate the Bill of Rights. Dangerous. But nuclear launch codes. Dangerous. I will vote for Clinton and hope I make it to the parking lot before I get sick. <laughs> this person is an asshole, a douchebag. Well, he's already given the, uh, and the, and should, the election to Clinton, and right? And should receive my shillelagh up against his or her skull for not wanting to write in Bernie Sanders, all right? That's it. Uh, what America needs to stay great is a Bernie Berg. Bernie, the Bernie Birdie. The Birdie, the bird is the word. This would be a combination of Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg. What? <laughs> what? A right wing little Napoleonic complex uh, conservative dude like Bloomberg? You might as well say Sanders would be selling out, too. Sanders has utopian ideas. So what's wrong with that? And strong morals to save the middle class. All right, so what's the problem? By bringing back fair salaries and a fair tax system for hedge fund managers and stock option compensated executives, thus adding jobs and lowering the deficit. Hey, this fucking jabroni, let me tell you something. Free market capitalism only helped the rich. It never did a damn thing for the poor and low-income people. Bloomberg would use his sharp business skills. Oh, yeah, that's what you want running the country. And uh, his proven work with people. A corporate person. Oh, yeah. When he was mayor of New York City. What we need to do is lock these two guys in a room for a month or so and have Bloomberg figure out a business economical way to get Sanders ideas, expanded health insurance, free college tuition, and the like to work without raising taxes. Why does it have to be a business-oriented plan? And what's wrong with raising taxes on the rich? This person's an imbecile. That type of platform could lead us in the future. I like to lead this person with my pointy cowboy boot right up his ass. What we do not need is a true conservative running the country. Americans are idiots. If I had to settle on someone other than Sanders or Bloomberg, I guess a rhino, Republican in name only, is the next best choice. This, this person is an idiot for even mentioning Bloomberg. He wasn't a great mayor. He was pro-business, yeah, of course. Well, yeah. I guess that's it, then. Isn't he the one that cut the uh, the uh, the secure subway security, the uh, anti-terrorism subway security uh, force? I don't he know. reduced the uh, NYPD and. Uh, I don't think he would dare do that. No. Well, look. We thought New York City had a, 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 a liberal mayor, but he changed his mind. He, he went with Hillary. Him and his wife went with Hillary. Well, I, as Hillary said to him, Bill, it took you long enough. How arrogant a, a statement that is, as she said that. It took you long enough. Like, everybody has to embrace Hillary Clinton, according to Hillary. It's all got to be Hillary's way. Everybody has to it's support. It's my time. A woman it's in the White House. Woman in the way of. Fuck political correctness. Fuck the ultra liberals. That's it. We'll see you next time on part two of our new series. And the series is in the title.
of the show. We'll see you. What's the title? <clears throat> mm, well, it's a good title. I did. Well, what's the title? It's a, why do you fucking put me on the spot see, for? See, you don't even talk. How the, the fuck do I know title. what the title is? Uh, it's like Progressive oh, uh, Warriors for... For Bernie Sanders, uh, uh, end time, end time countdown. Uh, oh my God! Ba ba da ba ba da bing, 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 bing. Did you ever hear of a one or two? Uh, Nobody's word got. Title. That is not gonna bulldoze people over with one or two words. What the fuck is that gonna do? Well, the Trumpy does well with them. What? What, what kind writer. of? What kind of? What do you? How am I gonna explain what we do in a few words? Come on, listen to the show. How are you going to get people to listen to the show unless you unless you attract their eyeballs? Exactly. But they're not going to just willy nilly listen to shows uh, uh, unless, to unless, show the, unless the unless the title entices them. You have to entice people. The enti does a go go dancer entice somebody before she gets tips from from uh, patrons? Yes. I don't know. Of course, she's got to do something. She's dancing. No, she gotta look good. She's dancing. She gotta look good. She can't be no fun, honey boo boo fat slob dancing. She gotta look good. She gotta look hot. Oh. That guy. This has been a Mega Life 21 production. <laughs>